Just a quick follow-up to our bouncing video that we did previously. A couple recommendations in the comments or just other ways of working. I'm gonna show you here. Personally, I'm very set in my ways, so I'm not probably gonna change anything, but if you're new to music production and you're looking for smarter, more efficient ways, maybe one of these will be useful for you. So one of the things I talked about was getting that kind of clean loop with something that has like a long reverb tail to it. Now, what I found from doing this technique, at least on this sound, is that it still doesn't work perfectly. Like you would still probably have to do some kind of like crossfading and things, but um, it is a method if you don't wanna have the two tracks and do the Lego-y thing that I showed previously. So if we were to go and bounce this out, what we're going to hear is a problem. Um, the first time that this ever plays, obviously the reverb tail hasn't been built up and there's also a little bit of an attack to this sound. So when we go on here and we loop around, this is gonna sound very awkward. In comparison to our MIDI track. Which is super smooth. So what was recommended was instead of doing what I did, which would be to go on, bounce out the reverb tail, and then Lego it back and forth, would be to actually just like duplicate this and bounce out the entirety here. And yeah, I know, I should use key commands, I don't. Um, we'll go and we're gonna bounce this out. Now I would still probably want the tail but for this example, let's not do that. So we're gonna go, we'll bounce out this longer version. And then if we were to go in and we were to loop around the second half of this loop, hopefully that would then eliminate that problem. Um, what we're going to hear though, is that we still do get a little bit of a click and a pop. So if we were to go in here now, what we really wanna listen to is this loop, second half, let's solo. And we get a little bit of that click. And then if we were to go in here and split this out, and I think it just does auto fades anyway, um, it doesn't totally solve that problem. We're still getting that click to occur and we could figure it out and we could solve it or we could do something where we do like a crossfade. But for me, I'm probably gonna stick with the method I use just because that's what I'm comfortable and familiar with. But that is a very intelligent and smart way of thinking about it. You can build up that reverb and then kind of bounce that way. But I think I still am gonna, you know, do what I do just because, you know, I'm old, I can't change. Now, if you remember in the video, I also talked about how I work with a graveyard track. And once I kind of finish with a part and I bounce it to audio, I move that MIDI instrument and everything into its own separate group and that just gets deactivated. And if I have to find something later on, I'll go back to it, bring it back up, reactivate it, et cetera. So this is an interesting technique because it leaves everything inside of one group. That's also kind of the downside because to do this in the way that I would work, you would need to put every single instrument that you have into a group track just by default, just right off the bat. And then you're gonna end up with a project where you're gonna have groups within groups within groups not the end of the world, but it's just something to be made aware of here. So for example, we have this tall mod part. And we can hear that we're also sending this into a reverb. Now, if you're gonna use this strategy or you're gonna use this workflow, do your sends up in the group level. Don't do it down on the instrument level because you're gonna have to repeat that stage that I showed you before where we're gonna have to match this up afterwards. Um, I'll just show you why that is really quick. So let's go ahead and I do just wanna consolidate this again so we just have that one audio track. I'm gonna go up to the group level now and what I'm going to do is I am going to bounce in place. Now it's not removing anything, it's just gonna literally put it up here. So we bounce in place and we can see we're getting that audio file. And now when I go in here and I deactivate this, we're not gonna hear the reverb coming through. So we would have to go back and we'd have to match the settings that we had, which is not that big of a deal, but if you wanna save one step, and I need to 
uh, show my activated tracks again. What I would do instead is set my level here at this point. Turn that off. And now I could repeat the same step. So I'm just gonna go in here, again, bounce in place. And we're gonna go down and we're going to deactivate this track. And there you can see it saved that. So that's really nice. Now, the one thing that will be annoying and one other setting that you'd have to change is that if I like double click this to edit, I actually have to go through a couple additional clicks just so I could get to the audio file. Um, the way that you would solve that is just to right click and show master track content. Now instead we have this audio track right here and we don't have to go through that extra stage of clipping or sorry, clicking, and then we could make our audio adjustments like so. One drawback, you can't resize your group tracks, at least not in the version that I work in. So you're not gonna be able to make this thing any bigger, which may not be a big issue to you, but it's one of those things that could be annoying in certain situations. However, on the whole, it's a very smart approach to keeping everything together, keeping everything bundled. And the person who recommended this called it a zombie approach because it's basically, you know, you've got your living dead down here <laughs> in the folder. Um, so definitely something to experiment with. I think that's really smart. Um, I probably should change over and start doing that kind of a method, but I just know myself, I'm going to continue to do what I do. But hopefully that was helpful. Some great feedback there. And um, like always, feel free to leave your feedback and comments and stuff if you have smarter or different ways of working. There really is no best or worst approach. It's just what you feel comfortable with. This one clearly can speed up, speed you up a little bit though. So definitely want to show that off.